All right. Today we are continuing on the outdoor kitchen project and behind me you can see we're working on the kitchen island. So we're going to do the metal framing today and get the electrical ran. Let's get started. <laughs> So before we get started, uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the tools and how to get it set up to uh, use metal studs as that's what you're going to use for your, your outdoor kitchen as well. So uh, I've got a pile here already started for the studs, uh, the vertical supports in the framing. And so I'm using my DeWalt 12 inch uh, miter saw and it's working quite well. So how I have it set up, I have it on the stand. It's really useful because it has these uh, built-in stops. And so basically what I've done is I've measured the distance from my, my stop to the blade and I don't have to measure and I just set each one on there, cut it, and I get uh, the exact same length over and over and over again. So that's been extremely useful. I am also using uh, this DeWalt blade that's specifically made for metal and so I'd recommend you do that instead of uh, trying to use a tooth blade it's dangerous and um, this is like probably seven dollars nine dollars something like that so extremely cheap um, pick one up if you're going to be cutting a lot of studs you could also use uh, tin snips um, I'm not using tin snips just because I have so many to cut I uh, figured it's a lot easier uh, to be using the table, or sorry, the, the miter saw for my cuts. Now, if you're going to be using uh, that saw to cut your steel, uh, a couple things to be aware of. One, it produces a tremendous amount of sparks, so make sure you have sealed uh, eyewear, tremendous amount of noise, uh, so get some ear protection on there as well, and save your fingers. There's a lot of sharp edges, so get, get a good pair of gloves as well. All right, and another important uh, item to have ready before you start is a good plan. And so I have I've drawn out uh, what my island in the kitchen is going to look like, where my doors and refrigerator is going to be with dimensions. Uh, doing this ahead of time, uh, thinking through this, um, is going to save you a ton of time during the build process. And so uh, take the time to do this as well. And of course, got my... Uh, square here uh, to make sure everything's square and I'm using these needle nose locking grips uh, to hold everything together as I screw it put the screws in so that's what I'm going with go ahead let's get started all right so up to this point I've gone ahead and cut some Trex deck deck boards I'm um, using those to set the steel framing on just to keep, lift them up off the ground uh, so they're not in contact with the concrete. Uh, thinking maybe over time that might save them from, from rusting. Um, and then also uh, to secure those boards to concrete I used my hammer drill, drilled out um, a hole on each end and then uh, used concrete uh, screws and attach them with those. And so they're done, they're secure. Let's go ahead and get started assembling the island. All right, well, the uh, battery on the camera died, so I did not was not able to capture all that, but uh, we'll walk you through uh, the finished product here and, and how I went about it. So here is the uh, completed island, ready for plumbing and, and then for uh, some cement board. And so this is my first time working with steel studs, and I think it went extremely well. So here's some tips and 
for someone that's never worked on it before, here's some of the things that I, I learned. Um, cutting each stud beforehand on the uh, miter saw with the, the stop, so each stud is exactly the same, I think is a great idea. And I would recommend if you can do that, set up a jig, something to do that. Um, in an island like this, having every piece exactly the same just makes it go together a lot easier. Make sure it's, it's, it's level um, and that you don't have any issues with that. So that's the first tip that worked out extremely well. Um, my other tip, and so I use these uh, Trek screws. I use half inch. I think the length, um, if you can see it's popping through here, it, I think the length works fine. Uh, half inch was, was long enough, it felt like. Uh, my problem was I was using this compact drill or impact uh, driver and I was stripping the screw um, and it, it would just spin. And so after a few of those, I figured out that that was my problem. Then I went to um, just a regular drill with uh, the torque turned way down on it. For, I was out of six of, of 18 on it. And that seemed to go a lot better. And then I was able to uh, really see the, the screw tight on it without stripping it out. And that, that worked well from that point going forward. Um, I used the Trex deck board to sit the island on. Um, that worked well. Um, the one thing I did to attach it, uh, so I have the, the deck boards secured with their own uh, concrete screws. And then after the fact, I've come through, uh, see if I can show one without a huge reflection. I've come through and used um, uh, new, deeper, longer concrete screws with a washer. And so I used the washer on the screw just to give it a little bit more pull out. Um, so I'll show you what I did. And so if you look at these screws, these are the ones I use, I think two and three quarters inch. Um, the head isn't all that big and this 20 gauge steel, not that it should ever pull out around that head, but I didn't want to take the chance. And so for like, what, a couple bucks, um, I went ahead and purchased these washers that, um, go around the screw and just give it a lot more pull out strength. Um, so I feel very confident that, um, they will, no matter the wind, it's not going to pull out. And so I put one of those in every couple feet all the way around the island as well. And to strengthen it, so once I got it, the shell built and put it on here, it was still quite uh, wiggly. Um, and so I went through and added some bracing to it. So I've added a couple of braces up top um, to give it some additional strength. Um, I got a couple a corner brace in here to give it a little bit additional strength um, and that that shorted up pretty pretty well but I was still having some play um, on the front to back and so I added this excuse me this brace uh, on both sides and with this brace in here with two screws um, it is now um, pretty sturdy even without any of the Duroc on and once the Duroc's on uh, it's not going to move at all. So that has worked out well um, as well. And so the other trick, or other tip I should say, is when you're putting this in, just make sure that you line up all your holes through the studs, uh, either on the top or the bottom, so you don't, you're not zigzagging your electrical up and down. There's a couple I, I lost track of and had to pull out and redo, um, just to make sure that the conduit would go through it effic efficiently. Um, outside of that, so to run the electrical um, through the island, so I'm going to have, as you can see, an outlet on this side and another outlet on the opposite side of the island. Um, I have the power coming in through here, which runs up to the sub panel over there. Um, and then I used non-metallic flexible watertight to go to this four inch box here. Um, I'm actually in the process of putting a, a box extender on here. There's too many wires in there. I don't have enough room. So I'm gonna extend that box out and this outlet will be there with, um, excuse me, 
down here with this cover. Um, and this outlet will be used for the refrigerator that's going to be in here. And then from this box out to the other outlets, um, I've used uh, flexible metal conduit. And so this is half inch. Um, and I, I did run a ground and all that. So I do have a, a black, white and a, a green running from there to each outlet. Um, I used these, uh, uh, I guess, clamp connectors for the flexible metal conduit. Um, I've never used this conduit before. Um, I will say it's very easy to use. So here's some of the parts uh, over here. I'll show you what, what I used. Um, so this is very flexible. I use a half inch. Uh, depending on the wire you're running, you may be able to use uh, the three eighths. Um, but to cut this, you really just kind of bend it and un reverse spiral it where you want it to cut and then just use some tin snips um, and it cuts quite easily. And then uh, in your, where it connects to your junction box, you just want to make sure you use these uh, bushings these anti-short bushings and those just go right in the end uh, of your conduit like that and then when you put it into your your box that pushes up against it so the wire that comes through here will not be cut um, on any of these sharp edges left from you cutting the conduit and so just make sure you use those um, but yeah that worked quite well uh, very easy and here's the uh, screw on or sorry the uh, clamp uh, con conduits clamps that I used and so you got your ring take that off put it in your box puts it back on and then this part goes over your conduit and then you just use your screwdriver drill and screw that down tighten it and then it'll create a pretty tight tight seal um, now it's obviously not watertight um, I've watched lots of different, gotten lots of opinions, watched lots of folks. Um, I think this, I've seen many people do it this way using flexible metal conduit. There's some opinions out there on is this considered a wet, wet or a damp. Um, I, there's, in reality, water should not be getting inside of uh, the island. And so I'm not going to consider it, I'm not considering it a wet space. So I'm not using weatherproof boxes. I, I think others have used these. I've seen them, uh, no issues. And so that's how I'm going to approach this as well. So, but as always, um, you know, consult your local code, um, when, when doing something like this, but otherwise, um, got my door openings here. I just used uh, a piece of track, um, and cut the tab and then bent uh, the other portion up and so those will act as my my headers and everything for for my doors got one here here so trash and a drawer here i got a double door here for under the sink and then this is where the refrigerator is going to go um, i'm actually going to be cutting out uh, this bottom track here and trimming those deck boards back to make room for that refrigerator and um, then up top all I left was just this track and this will be plenty strong to hold the cement board in the concrete countertops. Um, outside of that, I think everything else um, went pretty well, pretty self-explanatory. Um, so, uh, if there's any questions, again, like I said, this is my first time uh, using the metal studs. Um, I'm also going to be using them here to, to frame this counter and uh, some of them over here is this and also using structural studs to frame the um, little house that the wood-fired oven will be used in so this was kind of my initial test um, went together well so i have pretty good confidence moving into the next part um, so after this we're going to be running the plumbing next um, out of the house with some blowout valves into hot and cold water into the island so that'll be the next video then we're gonna get Durock on this and move on to the to the next part of the countertop. So um, if you have any questions on this, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, otherwise, check back. We'll see you soon. Oh, one uh, other note that I just remembered. 
um, as you are working with these studs. Uh, you need something to clamp uh, the studs together with as you screw them. Um, I started with this pair of uh, vice uh, needle nose. And I do not recommend these uh, for, for how I use them anyway. Um, they're great on their own, but maybe not for this. And so the challenge is these studs um, have a little bit of a, a lip on the back, obviously, for strength. And so you have to get your tension on these just right to get over that lip. And I've actually was a too tight a couple times and I crushed or I bent dented and bent. Uh, the back side of that steel stud and so what I'm moving towards moving forward on the next and the rest of this and I would suggest you uh, if you don't have a pair to purchase it is just one of these uh, pair of vice grips that have um, just the blunt edges on them um, and then with this these will open and they will actually go around and clamp here and it'll clamp around the back side and it's going to hold those together really well for you without worrying about bending any of the steel. So I um, want to just quickly jump back in here and, and make sure I uh, didn't forget about that because that was probably one of the biggest learnings I had is don't use this, but instead use these. So there you have it.